All right, conclusion. 1 John 3, 9. And we'll take a peek at 1 John 5, 18. It has one little phrase in it we have to clarify. Each one of those in view in 1 John 3, 8. Previous verse, the devil and the Son of God are in view, not you and I. Who has been born of God? The Son of God has been born of God and the devil into holy, perfect humanity, born of God into holy, perfect humanity, does not sin, which could only be the Son of God, Jesus Christ, excluding the devil. What a contrast. Nothing but evil. For God, see, the Holy Spirit remains in him, in Christ, and he cannot sin because he has been wholly born of God. The devil sinned from the beginning. We have this holy, born God, perfect humanity, born of perfect humanity, does not sin. So here it is. Each one who has been born of God does not sin, for his God seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. <clears throat> so 1 John 3.19 must be understood as follows. Each one is of those in view in the immediately preceding context of verse 8. Who are those? Not you or I, the devil, who sinned from the beginning, total evil, and the Son of God, who has been born of God into holy, perfect humanity without a sin nature, which can only be the Son of God excluding the devil. Without a sin nature, he cannot sin does not sin, therefore, not, does not practice sin, does not sin at all, has never sinned. For his God seed, the Holy Spirit, remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Now, you have the Holy Spirit in you, but have you been wholly born of God? No, not yet. Take a look at Matthew 1, 20 to 23. This is the born of God experience <clears throat> that only Christ experienced. But when he had con considered this, Joseph Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She, was, she will bear us a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken of by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child Isaiah, and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. <clears throat> Only a perfect sinless man, wholly born of God through the Holy Spirit, who is God with us, can be in view in 1 John 3, 9. Hence, 1 John 3, 9 is not a test of salvation at all, but a statement of fact that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was born of God into perfect humanity, is the one for children of God, born of God, to follow, emulate, and abide in his righteousness, and... Not the devil, the evil of the devil, who has sinned from the beginning. When you do evil, you're aligned with the devil, yet you're a born-again child of God. But when you confess and move on and do righteous things, now you're aligned with Jesus Christ and his perfect humanity. That's the one we're to focus on. Hence, abiding in the one who has been born of God is the message of 1 John 2, 28 to 39, 3, 9. So, we've got that. Let's move over to the sister passage. 1 John 5.18. Look at the two. Each one who has been born of God does not sin, for his God's seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. That's 1 John 3.9. Look at 5.18. We have known that each one who has been born of God does not sin. Now here's the other verse that was part of the verse. But he who is born of God keeps himself, and the evil one does not touch him. Is that you? We, we believers in Christ, if sinless perfection on the part of the child of God, born of God, is in view in 1 John 3, 9, and looking at 1 John 5, 18, then there would be no need for much of God's word, only passages which lead up to and include salvation. Therefore, thereafter, the born of God experience, the child of God, born of God, would be perfect with no need for instructions, corrections, forgiveness of temporal sins, and so on. So all of the passages exhorting believers to grow in the word and abide in the righteousness of the Lord would be of no value throughout Scripture, especially in the first epistle of John, even an error. There would be an error. Would you advise somebody to, to be faithful? We are automatically going to be. No, no. Don't, don't throw out the epistles. Although sinless perfection of the entire child of God is claimed by some to happen automatically at the spiritual birthing experience, all of the passages which admonish a child of God not to behave like the world, such as in 1 John chapter 2 and Romans chapter 6, would then be misleading one to think that a true believer could practice sin. So if children of God, born of God, do not and cannot sin, which is not true, then all of these oft-ignored passages must be expunged from God's word. There'd be too much conflict, including most of the New Testament epistles, including the last 
verse uh, first john little children guide yourself from idols but such is not the case children of god born of god do sin and must remedy that situation but what god has provided for when they do sin and we've gone over this over and over and over 1 john 1 7 to 2 2. now most of these last few YouTubes have been based on an expression of salvation by Bruce Hurt. And you can recognize them. We'll go over them quickly. You believe a person can say, I believe in a moment and like magic that assures they are forever in the kingdom of God, having escaped the flames of hellfire? Well, my answer, that's precisely what dozens of and dozens of passages of dozens and dozens of passages in scripture say beginning with John 3 16 except the word is believe not just say I believe but to actually believe and in a moment's time the magic of God of my salvation unto eternal life was begun never to be undone or unfinished because of the sovereignty and infinite capacity of God it's all in his hands not mine by the way it indeed is like magic for it is by the supernatural power of God and him alone unsurpassed magic there's a wand of unsurpassed magic called God. And we looked at that. Whoever believes in John 3.16 is a not a present tense verb, not conveying continuous action, but a, a noun, a punctiliar action. The believer, the one who has expressed a moment of faith alone in Christ alone, the one, everyone, the believing one, and you have eternal life. We went over that. Let's go back. Point two, Bruce Hart further wrote, this is what he wrote, hard to deal with, and that they can be, spend the rest of their life denying the only master and Lord Jesus Christ, continually living in total depravity and utter abysmal licentiousness until they take their last breath and drop off into eternal hellfire because of their deception? Really? He's accusing me of this just because I say in a moment's time you become born again and have eternal life forever because it's eternal. Now, he just wants to condemn me right off the bat. Boy, if he had rocks, he would have thrown them at me. But I wasn't present with him physically. Okay. Now, my answer. Say it for believers to act that way. They potentially can, but a number of them do. Nevertheless, no matter how badly a believer behaves, he is indeed eternally secure as Scripture teaches properly read properly read, not cherry-picked to rotten fruit. No believer will drop off into eternal fire because of their deception or anything evil. Remember, that's paid for and forgiven. Even Hitler had his sins paid for. Evidently, he never believed. If he did, which I doubt, he'd have his sins forgiven. That's the gospel. Remember that Jesus Christ paid dependently for the sins of the whole world. 1 John 2.2 2. So the one who expresses a moment of faith alone in Christ alone unto eternal life is thereby totally forgiven of all of his sins, past, present, and future, no matter what or how egregious the sin he has committed, commits, and will commit. That's what the Bible actually teaches. Went over that. Point three, whose heart further wrote, hurt. Three. If that is all Jesus is to you, a fire insurance policy and a free pass to live like the devil all the rest of your days, then simply stated, your Jesus is not the same as my Jesus. <clears throat> and he goes, not even speaking of theology, such a belief is not even intellectually logical. Wow. By the way, wouldn't you say that what is in view here, what I'm writing about is theological? After all, it is about God, theology, theos, theos, and his one and only son, the Son of God, being God, being given for one's sins, that's theological. I don't know what he's, he's just angry. And did I say that this is, that is all Jesus is to me? No. Without knowing much about me, you seem so con condemnatory that you condemn yourself. Remember the verse in Luke and elsewhere, do not judge, and you will not be judged, and do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Pardon, and you will, not, and you will be pardoned. So if you, if you were saved by grace through faith, which he seems to say and then takes it away. And so far it is evident that you are not, since you do not personally espouse what Scripture says to do in order to be saved unto eternal life, which is express a moment of faith alone in Christ alone plus nothing, as it stipulates in John 3.16, 
and hundreds of other verses. And you would nevertheless, and solely by the grace of God, make it to heaven's shores no matter how, how unfaithful you were. He's saying, look, I say, don't look at me and condemn me to hell. Look to yourself to make sure you're perfect, because that's what you think you have to be. For all are, for are not all sins of all mankind, even others, Hitler's paid for, propitiated, and all are not all of the sins, past, present, and future, forgiven unto eternal life for all who have expressed a moment of faith alone in Christ alone, plus nothing else? Can you out the cross? For it's not by grace you have been saved. Is it? It is not by grace you have been saved through faith, is it not? And that salvation is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God and not by works? Okay, moving on. We've gone over this a lot, but this is coming from here, originated from here. Whose heart continues on his tirade against me, who's never even known me except through this one or two emails. <clears throat> so we can reduce this down. There we go. And he goes on to say, And the Apostle John also has a word that relates to those who profess Jesus and then progress to live like the devil. <clears throat> there you go, judging me unto condemnation into hell without evidence. So quick. Don't you care about my eternal destiny? Isn't that your job? No, apparently not. He just wants to get the shovel and bury me quickly so I can go to hell. Or even so much as a trial so I can defend myself. What kind of God do you think you are? Judging me. Not the God that I know. After all, gods don't make it to heaven. Sinners do. What evidence do you have that I live like the devil and I, that I do not have the righteousness of Christ credited to my account? I don't think he knows anything about justification. That I do not have the permanent dwelling of God the Holy Spirit in me who guarantees my final eternal redemption no matter what. That I am not already seated in the heavenlies after being having believed in the gospel. That's Ephesians 2, 6 through 10. Well, Moving on, Bruce Hart further wrote, and the Apostle John also has a word that relates to those who profess Jesus and then progress to live like the devil. Okay, little children, let no one deceive you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who practices sin is of the devil. And he goes on to say, could, not, could John be any more clear about the person you think is saved by a profession in a moment and then say he spends the rest of his life living like the devil? Wow, did you know, Bruce, that you're talking about Jesus Christ, who's born of God? You're not talking about me. I'm born not holy yet of God, which we just went through, 1 John 3, 9, and 1 John 5, 18. So he's got this totally uh, reversed and misinterpreted, like most Christians or so-called Christians. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So I go, wow, because we differ theologically, you presume, assume that I have and am living a life of under God's con eternal condemnation, and you even describe it as an ungodly, licentious life full of egregious sinfulness. Has he got spies watching me or something? Who denies Jesus Christ as Lord and Master? When did I do that? You have never spent one second with me and until now know nothing about me except that you differ with me and with God's word about what a man must do to be saved unto eternal life. And you condemn me for not living the kind of life you evidently claim to live, one of absolute faith and faithfulness, that's what he claims to do, Never practicing sin in order to secure a life, which the Bible does not teach at all. 1 John 1, 9, that's the provision. Well, he goes on to say, and the Apostle John also has a word that relates to those who profess Jesus and then progress to live like the devil. And he reads all this passage, 1 John 3, 9. And he says, here the present tense clearly is continuous because he is born of God. Well, yes, Jesus Christ is in view. He is born of God. He is continuously does not sin. Your friend who is continuously sinning is in a bit of trouble theologically. He thinks I'm continuously sinning. Wow, are you following me? You have thoroughly condemned me without allowing me a proper defense from Scripture. Do you actually believe that you do not practice sin as you claim in 1 John 3, 9? What about 1 John 1, 8? If we say that we have no sin, even for a moment, we are deceiving ourselves, ourselves and the truth is not in us. I don't think that's in his Bible. <clears throat> he doesn't cherry pick that one, does he? There you go again, misinterpreting the Bible and declaring the wrath of God on me unto eternal life. And like the writer John, you have no compassion, no agape godly love for me. And then John 1 John 1 says they, the apostles have a compassion and a, a, a really deep loving interest in all believers. 
the very thing you condemn me for. Remember, if you